there are some factors to consider when adding bull bits to your CNC arsenal. We're about to expand your tooling options. Information to make your next CNC project a success is on the way. A 3 quarter inch bowl bit is a large cutter relative to most of the tools you generally use. In fact, it's three times as wide as the basic 201 your machine comes with and most people start cutting with. The only bit of similar size that may have been in your machine is a 1 inch fly cutter similar to our McFly. Some of the same considerations for that fly cutter are at play with bowl bits. Plunging is difficult and burning of your stock could be an issue. Ideally, you'll want to use ramping to enter any contour or pocket. This drastically reduces the stress on the end mill, the material, and your machine. Bowl bits also have very interesting geometry, featuring a flat portion at the bottom that's even smaller than a quarter inch cutter. This affects the step over. You're going to have to go a lot smaller to avoid scalloping. New libraries and new tools are under your management. The must do here is the diameter of the cutter. The rest is really info directed at you by you. The name of the cutter, the number, the vendor, the flute length, the number of flutes. When you get to the 2D cutting parameters, depth of cut, RPM, and step over, I'm about to help you dial in a quality starting point. But remember, it's just that. When it comes to setting your initial feeds and speeds, let's remember that bowl bits, even when run in a standard router table, have to be run at multiple depths in order to produce a deep cut. Now, anytime you get a new tool, you want to add it to your tooling database. Hey, Future Kevin here. If you don't use Carbide Create, you want to skip ahead to the next chapter, Testing and Settings. It's in the description below. If you do use Create, we've got some great information coming for you right now. Let's first start with the settings that I whipped over a minute ago. With Carbide Create open, you can go up to Edit, and then you want to go to Show Tool Database. And that will pop up all the pre-populated tools that exist inside of Carbide Create. You may or may not have added your own tools sometime before adding a bowl bit. You can create custom libraries for certain materials. You can create custom libraries for extra tools you've added for different manufacturers. However you want to manage this area is entirely up to you. For me, I have a few different added libraries that I regularly use. Now, I've already added a 3 quarter inch bowl bit to my library. If you wanted to start over, brand new, in the library of your choice, right click, new tool, end mill, and then you want to add it in inches or millimeters. Here, I'm going to use inches because it's measured in inches in its diameter. But the expression editor would have you covered here anyway. So the name, this is something optional for you to remember. And when I said that you're basically giving information to yourself, a lot of this is all about you remembering what tool it is that you've designated inside of Carbide Create when it comes to running things at the machine inside of Carbide Motion. We'll call this bowl bit sample model three quarter inch super touch bowl bit vendor unknown i don't remember where i bought it or who it was from but it's a three quarter inch bowl bit tool number now this is where you can choose so you know what custom tools are give it a tool number you can add something in here you could add 406 it doesn't really matter something you're going to remember maybe a series you're going to remember now here's the diameter Real simple here, 0.75. And this is the most important measurement because it tells Carbide Create how to make the G code, where to constrain the bit so it stays inside of the vector geometry that you have assigned it. Now, 2D feeds and speeds down here. Plunge rate, feed rate, RPM, depth of cut. This is all up to you, and this is where I started way too slow. I started with eight inches per minute plunge, feed rate of 70 inches per minute, and an RPM of 20,000, depth of cut 0.0689 inches. These numbers would change rather quickly. My first cuts were in walnut, and I started with those slow numbers, eventually dialing it up to 1.5 millimeter depth of cut and 5,000 millimeters per minute in terms of a feed rate. That is 200 inches per minute if you can't do the math. During my initial cuts, it became obvious that my step over value was too large. We already talked about how narrow that flat portion of the bull bit really is. I had to reduce my step over to account for that small flat area. If you don't, you're going to have big scallops. Now, big scallops might be a feature that you have on some bowls. You might just do that as a thing. I think people might like it. It still features that same nice radius all the way across. Give it a whirl, a little bit of testing, you never know what you might come up with. When you're cutting hardwoods, walnut, maple, cherry, you have to make sure you're not burning the material as you cut it. The corners are gonna be the problematic spots for this as that tool is fully engaged. Balancing that feed rate along with the RPMs will keep you getting quality cut. Also, you should know those edges are going to be loud because of the full engagement.
Version 1 helped me increase my feed rate, dial in the depth of cut, and showed me that my step over needed work. The look of this tray right off the machine wasn't going to cut it and would require a ton of post-processing to make it even decent. In version 2, I was still left with some pretty obvious tool marks, especially in the cross grain portion of the cuts and the step outs of the pockets. I wanted to do less sanding, so here's what I did. In version 3, I created a finishing pass. And to accomplish this, I utilized the value of T and a modifier inside of Carbide Create. This is part of our expression editor. I initially had a value of T minus 5.5 millimeters, meaning it would leave 5.5 millimeters of material between the bottom of the cut and the bottom of the stock. I then set up a finishing toolpath to cut from T minus 5.5 millimeters to T minus 5 millimeters, thereby creating that 0.5 millimeter finishing pass. With that final shallow pass, I also went with a 0.75 millimeter step over. And look at this. There are virtually no tool marks on here. I did not sand this at all. It is straight out of the machine and it looks nearly flawless. You could go even a little bit smaller. You could go to a 0.5, a 0.25, and just see how clean can you really get those cross cuts. That's an area I'll leave for you to explore. Let me know in the comments below if you've been able to achieve better results. I've uploaded my version 3 file to CutRocket, our free file sharing service. You can download it, inspect it, and use it as a jumping off point for your own bowl bit projects. Because I did my testing in Walnut, I ended up with three beautiful trays. And I really like this too, where you get a little bit of au naturel in your items, where you run into a knot, you have some cracking. I like to leave it. I don't want to freeze it with epoxy. I don't want to make it perfect. I think this is natural beauty. You can also see the machine marks here. I sanded this particular one and they're still quite prevalent. That was the first effort. Second effort, look how much cleaner it got here. This is a lot better, but still some sanding was done to create that effect. So I knew with that finishing pass, things were going to be better. I didn't know how much better. And I was totally blown away by the impact that that had, that finishing pass, that small step over, that 0.5 final depth. I did zero sanding in the pocket of this tray and that looks wonderful. The other thing is look at those transitions. Look how beautiful those transitions are from the vertical to the horizontal faces. You'll immediately get compliments on how beautiful those trays look. And again, people don't know why they like it. They just know that they do. It's because of the geometry of that bowl bit really coming into play to make something exceptional. All right, get out there, add bowl bits to what it is that you're doing in your CNC shop. I think it's a worthwhile opportunity and we'll be back here on the channel again with more information, ideas, and inspiration.